Many people in the comments have drawn attention to the annoyingly wholesome sign behind me. This is not my sign. I do not approve of this sign. One day I will burn this sign. But in its defense, it did inspire a video on what positive affirmations each type would find beneficial to hear. As always, let me know down below in the comments which affirmations or quotes that you think would make good advice or would just be beneficial for other people of your type to hear. YouTube is a wonderful and weird place. If you want to see videos from this channel popping up in your feed more often, I would recommend subscribing and, dare I say, also clicking the dreaded notification bell, ESTP. Every day above Earth is a good day. I'm a big fan of this quote, and I think it validates an approach that ESTPs instinctively understand, but sometimes need to be reminded of and praised for. I think most ESTPs would agree that their way of living is usually straightforward. In fact, they often think that other people tie themselves up in unnecessary knots by overcomplicating and overthinking their lives. ESTPs might often hear from people in their lives that they lack direction or should have more of a plan for their life. However, taking things one day at a time or one moment at a time is actually a powerful way to live. Sometimes it can be good to not pressure yourself unnecessarily to have everything figured out and mapped out. This is especially true for ESTPs who do better when not having to think that way too much. ISTP. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. This quote made me laugh when I read it. I think it captures the mixture of intellectual and physical mastery that ISTPs are capable of. ISTPs want to imbue themselves with enough skills to complement their natural desire to live flexible and adaptable lives. They are not flighty or flaky people, but they do insist, whenever possible, on retaining that independence to make big big and swift changes in their lives should they wish. ISTPs want to feel like they can and actually be able to change the direction and course of their lives if they deem it necessary or desirable. I know that seems like quite a commonplace desire, but many people, if not most people, tend to gravitate towards the known and the comfortable, often worrying that they won't be able to update their skill set enough to take what they perceive as big risks in life. ISTPs go out of their way to make sure this is not the case. INFJ. The perfect moment is this one. INFJs, at times, can struggle to pull the trigger. It's a deadly trifecta of perfectionism, analysis paralysis, and being in their heads too much. They can simulate the future, that sounds hyperbolic, but it can be very mundane things as well, particularly predicting how people are going to react to things. It's tempting for them to stay there in their imaginations too much, thinking about, analyzing, ruminating, and running simulations of life without actually living it sometimes. With the ironic exception of actually using guns, sometimes it's good to shoot first and ask questions later in life. To just jump in, head first or feet first. To take the plunge. Action is the antidote to the plethora of problems that come from being trapped in the halls of your own imagination. ENFJ. Good riddance to decisions that don't support self-care, self-value, and self-worth. ENFJs are givers, and as they will tell you, giving is no guarantee of getting anything back. They have a potentially dangerous combination of being overly giving and not looking after themselves enough. If they were to reframe the way they make decisions and filter them exclusively through the lens of whether those decisions are first and foremost beneficial to them, or at the very least, not damaging to them, I think it would drastically change their lives. Healthy and mature ENFJs realize this, but sometimes it can take them a while to get there. ENTP. There are years that ask questions and years that answer. This is partially inspired by a conversation I had recently with an ENTP friend. He said, when talking about a particular job he's involved in, that, and I quote, maybe it's better if we don't achieve anything during this time. That way, we can really learn what the issues are. His point was that understanding the mechanics of the system and the flaws inherent within it was better long term. That way, you could potentially revolutionize the whole thing instead of succumbing to it and jumping through the hoops involved. I think it's very natural for ENTPs to have extended periods where they're mainly observing and consuming the world before taking action based on that. Many people from the outside won't realize that this is even happening, but ENTPs should very much lean into it. These periods of observation and analysis are the creative fuel for whatever endeavors they embark upon eventually. INTP. One's destination is never a place, but a new way of seeing things.
If I haven't used this quote in a previous INTP video, then I should have. I find it particularly apt, since INTPs really do travel to many places, just in their mind and not in reality. There are few things greater in life to an INTP than updating their understanding, especially when they realize that they were wrong about something. It's like some strange intellectual masochism, where they can think back disparagingly on the stupidity of their former selves, now that they've improved their knowledge. Yet again, this is an example of an invisible exploration that is almost impossible to appreciate from the outside looking in. So I would always encourage INTPs, when possible, to also share their thoughts, and if the people around them don't want to hear them, well, find different people. ISFJ. If I cannot do great things, I can do small things in a great way. This quote is one that very much validates a thought or mindset that is common for ISFJs to begin with. But I think it's worth repeating nonetheless. Like many wise mindsets, it involves letting go of the need to attain certain outcomes and, ironically, being more likely to achieve them as a result. A legacy can be constructed one small act at a time. After all, any complex achievement is many simple ones tied together with grit and consistency. Two traits that ISFJs can display in huge quantities. ESFJ no one is useless in this world who lightens the burdens of another. ESFJs are often rightly described as people who are sources of joy for others. If your focus in life is giving other people good experiences, then it's kind of difficult to point to. It's almost impossible to actually quantify. More than this, people are not the best at showing their appreciation, especially when it's something that has come to be expected. It's important to remind ESFJs that even if the people who are on the receiving end of their support or generosity or good experiences experiences, don't always show it, it is still very beneficial to them. In fact, probably more than those people even realize. ENTJ. Your crown has been bought and paid for. Put it on your head and wear it. ENTJs carry themselves like royalty lots of the time. Sometimes they can rub people up the wrong way with their blunt confidence. However, given that they almost always possess an intense work ethic, their confidence is usually justified. Perhaps ENTJs could be thought of as constant victims of the tall poppy syndrome. People can be slightly off-put by their go-getting mindset and their complete reluctance to be quiet about that fact. So for ENTJs, you've put in the work, flaunt it. INTJ. At first, people refuse to believe that a strange new thing can be done. Then they begin to hope it can be done. Then they see it can be done. Then it is done. And all the world wonders why it wasn't done centuries ago. Famous examples of INTJs often experience this ironic trajectory. At first they're seen as slightly crazy or overly ambitious, then eventually they get vindicated for being ahead of their time, or, sadly, overlooked because they were actually too early in their insights. If we take things back to a more day-to-day -day level, then INTJs pointing out the way things are going to play out, or suggesting ways that things could be improved to avoid problems down the line, then being ignored about it is a very common experience for them. So I think that INTJs should be strident and forceful about these things, because, be it on the macro or micro level, INTJs often possess ideas ideas that become commonplace long before they're actually commonplace. ISFP. I'm in the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing. A constant irritation to ISFPs is hearing from the people around them, or perhaps in the form of some kind of societal narrative, that they should have a concrete plan for their lives. That endless need to be fitting in with what often simply amounts to just being other people's feelings and pronouncements about how life ought to be lived. Wherever you are right now in life is the best place to be because by definition you can't be anywhere else. Following that strong intuition they have towards activities, hobbies or even lives that feel right to them is not just valid but is a very sensible way for them to live. After all, people squander so much of a lifetime beating an unceasing path towards goals whose allure is simply that other people would look favorably upon them. So, the only barometer that ISFPs should truly value is whether what they're doing at any given point feels right to them. ESFP. I am the greatest. I said that before I even knew I was. Whichever way you slice it, ESFPs either naturally possess an immense amount of self-belief, or they will need to possess that in order to get what they want out of life. They are people who often operate on instinct. As a result, they need to trust that instinct and have faith in it.
and themselves. Their path to success, in whatever way they define it, often necessitates sweat and toil. Their journey is energy intensive. Without that unshakable belief, the road will be a lot harder. In this sense, ESFPs are often initially seen as being too optimistic or ambitious even. Then, over time, they start to gradually prove people wrong one step at a time. ENFP. Your perspective is unique. It's important and it counts. People in possession of explorative minds, as ENFPs are, often run into a particular problem. Most ideas, tangential ponderings, and experimental notions go absolutely nowhere. There is a huge amount of trial and error involved with that way of approaching life. To onlookers, or even people close to them in their lives, it might look like everything they try doesn't work out, or that they're simply advocates of interesting, but ultimately cheap, ideas. What people overlook is that each new exploration brings a different perspective. One that might not offer tangible value in the moment, but always does, in some form, further down the line. So ENFPs should always offer their view and share their perspective, should they wish to, without worrying that other people might look upon them disparagingly or unfavorably. That is a reflection of other people more than it is of the views or opinions or ideas that the ENFP is sharing. INFP we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. I've mentioned in a previous video about INFPs that disillusionment is a feeling that can creep up upon them quite unexpectedly often. This is especially unsettling since many famous INFPs are people who you'd describe as being beacons of hope for others. So much in life can be disappointing, and people are chief among those things. So for INFPs, I think it's extremely important to always retain and maintain that faith in people, and a general sense of hope. Not least because hope is most important during those periods when it's hardest to maintain. ISTJ. We must be willing to let go of the life we planned, so as to have the life that is waiting for us. If you have an ambitious plan, try running it by an ISTJ. Be prepared to have it torn apart and shredded mercilessly. All of the potential flaws, pitfalls, and negative possibilities will be pointed out in coruscating, detail-oriented brutality. ISTJs are naturally calibrated to contend with the future in a defensively-minded way. This is a huge strength. However, like all strengths, it has a corresponding weakness. Sometimes you need to embrace the chaos rather than constantly struggling against it. Sometimes systems and structures need to be torn down and rebuilt to be revolutionized instead of just tweaked and improved in an incremental way. One of the ironies is that when ISTJs accept chaos, they're one of the best types at dealing with it. ESTJ. Act as if what you do makes a difference. It does. I'm yet to encounter an ESTJ that doesn't get a lot of things done, or if they're younger, they just do a lot of activities. In previous videos, I've talked about how they can sometimes end up very energetically going around in circles without some kind of long-term direction and vision. However, what's brilliant about the ESTJ approach is that they have a huge and immediate tangible impact. Also, more often than not, the impact they have on the people around them is remarkable. If an ESTJ becomes part of your life, then they leave. Be prepared to have to do a lot of rebuilding. Speaking from personal experience, and my observations, ESTJs should take pride in the level of impact they make when they are getting so much done. Please like and subscribe, and consider hitting the dreaded notification bell.